Hi there, my name is Alan Lamont. I'm going to talk about the Jesuits' uh, infiltration and overthrow of governments. And the Jesuits are the ones who started the world wars. We're reading the Jesuit oath that they will be a Jew among Jews, a Protestant among Protestants. They will be whoever they need to be. Uh, I want to just say, first of all, that there's been a lot of great revelation over the years by men like Eric John Phelps, Avro Manhattan, Alberto Rivera, who was a former Jesuit high level priest, uh, Edmund Paris. Charles Chinnicky and many many others you know men who knew the truth and men who gave their lives to uh, exposing this conspiracy and point the finger at the Jesuits uh, let me just give you some history of the Jesuits this is how evil this organization really is you know the Jesuits are the culprits that detonate the atomic bomb blast in Hiroshima also the Jesuits are the culprits for the sinking of the Titanic killing John Jacob Astor on board who was actually against the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank which is a Jesuit privately owned bank. Uh, also the Roman Catholic Jesuits were uh, you know just a continuation of the Roman Empire of Julius Caesar, Nero, Constantine, Augustus Caesar etc. And the Jesuit order is the old Roman Empire Praetorian Guard. I mean even if you look at Nazi Germany it was patterned after the Jesuit order and even notorious Nazi general Reinhard Galen was used by the Jesuits to train and create the CIA uh, Israeli Masonic Zionist Mossad and even 9-11 bringing it up to well it was a uh, you know over 10 years ago but the 9-11 the World Trade Center terrorist attack was not a terrorist attack you know but Al-Qaeda majority of people know this you know it's common knowledge uh, it was ordered by the Jesuit general, who, you know, is the previous Jesuit general, called Count Peter Hans Kovenbach. Uh And of course, the Jesuits used their, uh, you know, agent, the Masonic Osama bin Laden. And uh, he was obviously overseen by George Bush Sr., a member of the Secret Society of Skull and Bones. Uh, don't be deceived or by the whole Bohemian Grove, you know, it's just a Catholic retreat, it's just a place where the high Jesuits meet in America, you know, that govern the media, that govern the banking system, they're just Vatican Knights, that's all it is, you know, there's nothing more, people say that they sacrifice uh, and practice uh, satanic rituals, there's no actual evidence for that, you know, but I do believe the Jesuits are Luciferian sorcerers, like Agnitus Loyola, founder of the Jesuit order, it's said that actually the high Jesuits can levitate above the ground during meditation now this was according to Alberto Rivera who was a former Jesuit priest okay now listen there is a wall of silence in the churches you know on Jesuitism uh, it's it's a sad thing because you know God wants his church to be informed the Lord wants his people to awake to the truth about the New World Order but churches don't talk about the New World Order they don't talk about it they don't research it uh, many Bible believing uh, you know Christians you know are led by pastors who they just don't want to know they, they don't want to be aware of a New World Order they just say just keep your eyes on Jesus Ch just you know keep staying on the word keep preaching the word of God that's enough you know don't focus on the devil uh, you know I'm sorry but you know that that's just not good enough it's not good enough you know, the Jesuits are going to bring a papal inquisition against the church, you know, in the future, uh, again. And the Jesuits, really, at the highest levels of the Anglican church, the Pentecostals, the Methodists, the Baptists, seriously, they've infiltrated their churches and uh, they are the lecturers in these universities, okay? Uh, and this is the truth, you know? So that's why if you go to church, you don't hear the NWO. You don't hear nothing about Rome. You don't hear nothing about masonry. You don't hear nothing about anything, really. Okay, no, don't don't get me wrong. I mean, I used to preach the Word of God. I used to actually teach the Word of God. Not being a Bible college, but, you know, uh, we all have a different calling. It's not everyone's calling to, you know, constantly bring out the revelation of the New World Order. But at the same time, you know, it's important because if you read the book of Revelation... Uh, you know, it, it clearly reveals Babylon the Great rules over the kings of the earth. It clearly reveals that the Antichrist will cause all to receive a mark in the right hand of the forehead. But pastors say, well, you know, people don't need to hear that because we'll be taken up in the rapture. You know, 
So we won't see the Antichrist. We won't be here to save this mark. Who do you think brought that doctrine into the church? Jesuits. <laughs> Jesuits, yeah. They did. <laughs> yeah. So people take their eyes off the Vatican. Off the Pope of Rome. Sitting on his throne. And his pointy hat, you know. His Dagon pointy hat. You know. As the high priest of Babylon the Great. So, you know, Christians are no longer looking at the Antichrist seated on his throne. And it is a throne. My God, you've got the Vatican, it's a throne. Throne of all kingdoms. King of all kings. That's the truth. Okay, I'm getting off my subject here. Let's get back to it, okay. Uh, you know, as far as communism goes, uh, <laughs> the heroes of communism, Marx and Engels, they wrote what's called the Communist Manifesto in the 1880s. Sorry, I just got a drink of water. <coughs> they were actually coached and directed by Jesuit priests. <coughs> And the Communist Party was formed and created for the task of destroying the Orthodox Church and destroying the Jews and destroying the Tsar of Russia. You see, any Tsar, any monarchy that expels or persecutes the Jesuits, what do the Jesuits do? And this is going back to the Jesuit oath, they bring in the Jesuit agents. That's what they do, you know. Uh, they've done that also by creating what's called the Protocols of the Eld Elders of Zion, you know or otherwise known as the Protocols of Zion or Protocols of the Land Elders of Zion and this document really just paved the way for the common Jewish Holocaust you know uh, through the Nazi party and through uh, Stalin you know uh, but uh, you know millions of people have been put to death by all of these revolutions and that's what the Jesuits do you know they train uh, their men like Engels and Trotsky and Lenin and Stalin uh, to bring revolutions. We read in the Jesuit oath that they are to create revolutions and wars with countries who are at peace. Uh, why does the Vatican do this? Why does it overthrow royal bloodlines? Why does it overthrow governments? Well, the Jesuits were pretending to be communists. That's important to understand. You know, very important. They will pretend to be Democrats, they will pretend to be, you know, conservative in Britain, they will be Democrats, Republicans in America. <coughs> they will be whoever they need to be to infiltrate. And uh, the Vatican really, you know, created the Illuminati. Well, the Jesuits created the Illuminati. Uh, <coughs> you know, is really what's called an engine of destruction, you know, that's what it is. And, uh, uh, the Jews today are the financial arm of the Vatican. That's what they are, you know. But they're papal knights of Rome. Uh, the Illuminati is also connected with Zionism at the highest levels in governments and in the banking system. Obviously, with Opius Dio, you know. And they're key masons, you know. They're really key uh, knights that rule. So you have the, the financial Zionist arm of the Vatican with the Illuminati Opus Dio controlling the banking system and they're all Jesuit trained that's right it doesn't matter what name they go by it doesn't matter what Masonic order it doesn't matter what Vatican knighthood they're all Jesuit trained and they all infiltrate you know they've got no allegiance to their governments and uh, you know the Vatican you know trains all of these revolution leaders all of them you know uh, Adolf Hitler and his brown shirts, you know, Nazis, they were uh, financed by the Vatican, by Wall Street, by the Federal Reserve. And uh, I mean, a Jesuit priest named Father Stemfel, he wrote the book for Hitler, titled Mankind or My Struggle. And the book was really, if you, I've read this book, if you read this book, it's really a master plan of the Jesuits for the takeover of Germany. <laughs> if you read it, you know. Uh, it was High Provincials that wrote that book, not Adolf Hitler. Uh, and also you can read a lot of this information in a book called uh, The Secret History of the Jesuits by Edmund Paris. Let me explain that again. The Secret History of the Jesuits uh, by Edmund Paris. His name is spelled E-D-M-O-N-D, -E Paris. You can go on Google and get that free on PDF. Excellent book. And you read on page 138 he was actually a French historian but you read on page 138 
about the power of the Nazis, you know, uh, and how the Jesuits built up the Third Reich, and, you know, how the symbol of the swastika is really just a Masonic symbol. Uh, and uh, also Alberto Rivera, as I've said, he was a former Jesuit priest, and he brought a lot of this information out as well. Uh, Pope Pius, he supported Hitler, and it was the Catholic vote that put Hitler into power. Now here we see again, you know, Hitler was, you know, uh, national and socialist, but he wasn't. He wasn't at all. He was a Jesuit trained, uh, you know, man who really infiltrated German politics. But he would not have became, you know, Chancellor and he would not have became the Fuhrer if it was not for the Catholic vote. This put Hitler into power in 1933 when Germany signed a concordat with the Vatican uh, through Catholic Nazi Knight of Malta von Papen, who was one of Hitler's diplomats. And this is what he boasted to the world. Now this was a high Knight of Malta who signed a concordat with the Pope of Rome, and it's that which put Hitler into power. Listen to what this man says. Quote, The Third Reich is the first power which not only recognises but puts into practice the high principles of the papacy. So this is it as well. I'm going to bring a closure soon on this, but uh, but it doesn't matter if it's Spain with Franco. It doesn't matter, you know, if it's Stalin. It doesn't matter if it's Adolf Hitler. It was the Jesuits, right? It was the Jesuit order uh, working through all of these governments all of these fascist regimes, you know, because that's what the Jesuits prefer, fascist governments, absolute fascist governments, you know, where they have a total dictatorship over the whole nation. That's what the Jesuits prefer, you know, to anything else. Uh, the Vatican tries to convince people today that it had nothing to do with the war, that the Holocaust never happened, <laughs> uh, you know what's called holocaust deniers you know and there's some christians that are still of in that camp and they need to get out of it you know uh the holocaust is a proven fact of history uh there's also other books let me just close by saying this there's other books you can get on the internet by a man named uh, charles chinnicky uh he wrote a book called 50 years <coughs> sorry in 50 years in the church of rome and uh this is what Napoleon Bonaparte says. Now you can read this on page 174. That's page 174 in the book called 50 Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chinnicky. Now this is a quotation from Charles Chinnicky, but it's actually from Napoleon Bonaparte. Listen to what Napoleon Bonaparte says about the Jesuits. The Jesuits quote, The Jesuits are a military organisation, not a religious order. Their chief is the general of an army not the mere father abbot of a monastery. And the aim of this organisation is power. Complete power. Power in its most despotic exercise. Absolute power. Universal power. Power to control the world by the volition or the will of a single man. Jesuitism is the most absolute of despotisms or dictatorships. And at the same time the greatest and the most enormous of abuses which really means the most monstrous hurt which causes the most injury and damage to society the general of the Jesuits insists on being master sovereign over the sovereign wherever the Jesuits are admitted they will be the masters cost what it may their society is by nature dictatorial and therefore it is the enemy of all constituted authority every act every crime however atrocious is a meritorious work if committed for the interests of the society of the Jesuits. That's some quotation. And that's from Napoleon Bonaparte. And get this book, 50 Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chinnicky. Now all of these men, as I've said, they speak the truth. You know, all of these facts are there to be researched. All of these uh, books are written by men who knew the truth about the Jesuits in Rome. Okay, my name is Alan Lamont, and as always, all roads lead to Rome.